evening, everyone, to the 10 days of prayer, Monday night, day six, the all-night prayer warrior. We'd like to read the scripture for today, Psalms 119, verses 62 through 64. At midnight, I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all those who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth is full of your loving kindness, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. So the all-night prayer warrior is the theme for today. Brenda Gomez will actually be our speaker this evening. And we look forward to, to hearing what she, God has enlightened her to say. But before we begin, I ask that we bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you on this day, day six of the day of prayer, Lord. You have inspired us and filled us with great wisdom, people speaking your word, Lord, and enlightening us not only how to come to you, Lord, but how to come back to you, how to prepare ourselves each and every day, and Lord, how to do your good pleasure and will, not only in this world, but that we might be transformed as well. Lord, we pray that Brenda had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that your word, your, your spirit might be made manifest through her, that she might speak your words, Lord, and that she might give a message that you have for each and every person, not only here in the sanctuary, Lord, but for all those watching as well. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit may dwell in each person here and online to receive your word, to receive your wisdom, and Lord, that it might change them as well and transform them more into your likeness, Lord. That is the purpose of all this, that we learn to pray and that we learn to grow in you. We thank you and praise you, our Father in heaven, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So day one was about where are you and your walk with God. Day two was about consecration and commemoration, setting ourselves apart for God in all of our ways. Day three was about morning and evening and the importance of the temple service and that the prescribed by God services or rituals, um, prayer sessions each morning and evening. Day four was about what brings us back to God and that, that maintaining regular worship and inviting the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. Day five was about Jesus, the early riser, as David put it, the first prayer of the day. And today is the all-night prayer warrior. Before we begin, though, we have two songs that um, Danielle and Victor are going to be singing, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms and in Moments Like These. Thank you. White and red. No, green. green and red. Green. So what a blessing to be here on a weekday. I mean, we're so used to saying happy Sabbath, but happy Monday. Happy Monday. And, and those and, of you that and are... And isn't it a happy Monday when we are in God's house and we get to pray and we get to refocus our lives on him. So let's sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms. Those of you that are watching at home, we really want to invite you to sing, sing with, with us. us. 467 is the hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Heart. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. 
leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure, from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning. another song that we are going to sing together and we love this song so we hope that you get to sing out with us it's called in moments like these
Can I get an amen? Excellent. And actually, Brenda picked out the song for this evening as well. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Brenda to come up and share with us just what God has inspired her to say about the all-night prayer warrior, Jesus Christ. Is everyone able to hear me all right? Is it? Okay, perfect. So in case anyone doesn't know me, my name is Brenda. Um, I'm a little nervous to be up here. Um, I'm not a big public speaker at all. Um, so it took me a lot <laughs> to say yes, but um, it's everything for the Lord, right? So I apologize in advance if I do speak fast or skip over parts. It doesn't make sense. Um, I practice this at home when the timing was right, but I come up here and I speak very fast. Um, so just know it's my nerves. Um, we'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, Lord. I pray for tonight, Lord, for day six of the 10 days of prayer, Lord, that you may bless each and every one of us here and those watching online as well, Lord, that we are able to take this home with us, Lord, and pray as well, Lord, and learn from this and be prayer warriors just as Jesus was. Please be with us and please be the one who speaks through me, Lord, um, that everything I say is in accordance with you, Lord, and for your praise. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, so well, as the title says, um, the all-night prayer warrior, and so the passage that we're given tonight can be found in Luke 6.12, so if you guys have your Bibles, if you can open that up with me, if not, it'll be up on the screen. And so I'll go ahead and start reading. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued to pray all night in prayer to God. Now I'm going to continue reading the the verses that follow so we can get more context as to what it's talking about. Because for me, when I'm reading this right now, I can see that Jesus went out to the mountain and prayed. But what exactly is he praying about, right? So the next verse is verse 13 says, And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon who was called the Zealot, and Judas and the son of James, and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor. So here in the verses that I just read, at the beginning we can see the Bible first talks about how Jesus went out to the mountain and prayed, which this prayer was to prepare him for the next day because as we just read, this next day was a pretty big day as he was going to be selecting a team of 12 disciples who would one day go out to the world and, and, and spread the gospel. And I mean, any of us would most likely also be inclined to stay up all night in prayer if we also had to save the world by selecting 12 unqualified sinners. So the responsibility here, as we see, is, is pretty heavy. And in the next passage I'm going to read, it's by Ellen White, and she describes how Jesus is a prayer warrior. The majesty of heaven, while engaged in his earthly ministry, prayed much to his father. He was frequently bowed all night in prayer. His spirit was sorrowful as he felt the powers of the darkness of this world, and he left the busy city and the noisy throng to seek a retired place to make his intercessions. The Mount of Olives was a favorite resort of the Son of God for his devotions. Frequently, after the multitude had left for the retirement of the night, he rested not. Though weary with the labors of the day, while the city was hushed in silence and the disciples had returned to their homes to obtain refreshment and sleep, Jesus slept not. His divine pleadings were ascending to his Father from the Mount of Olives, that his disciples might be kept from the evil influences which they would daily encounter in the in the world and that his own soul might be strengthened and embraced for the duties and the trials of the coming day. All night while his followers were sleeping was their divine teacher praying. His example is left for his followers. So the first thing that I want to point out in this passage um, is at the beginning it says that Jesus left the busy city and the noisy throng to seek a retired place to make his intercessions. So here we can see that Jesus went up to a quiet place. He left everything that was happening around him in the busy city so that he could be in private conversation with the Lord and make his intercessions. So when I first read this, 
I was a bit confused as to what the word intercessions meant. And so kind of based on the context of what's happening and what Ellen White is describing, I gathered that it might be something of interfering for requests. And so just to make sure you know, I was understanding it correct um, and to better explain it, I used my good friend Google and looked up the meaning of it. So here, as we can see straight from Google, we're giving two definitions. So the first one is the action of intervening on behalf of another. And some similar um, other words that also describe this are mediation, negotiation, abbreviation, and conciliation. Um, and then the second definition that we're given is more of what Ellen White is talking about, which is the action of saying a prayer on behalf of another person. So prayers of intercession. So in the next slide, we'll, we'll focus on the second definition, which talks about prayers of intercession. So intercession is prayer that pleads with God for your needs and the needs of others. But it is also much more than that. Intercession involves taking hold of God's will and refusing to let go until his will comes to pass. And I just want to emphasize that last part where it says, taking hold of God's will and refusing to let go until his will comes to pass. So as we read earlier in Luke 6, 12, uh, we read that Jesus was praying and he was praying with intercession. That's what Ellen White describes to us. And he was asking the Lord to intervene and protect his disciples and keep them away from evil. Now, recently, um, my family and I, we've been going through a lot. Um, currently, still, my uncle is in the hospital um, with stage four cancer and other major health complications. So it's been very difficult for us these past 11 days. Um, and my first instinct when I heard the news was to pray and ask the Lord to please, please cure him. Lord, please use your hand and, and cure him. And I was, I was begging the Lord. I was like, it has to be this way. You have to, like, you can't let him go yet, you know? The doctors was telling, were telling us to basically put him to sleep. And in my mind, I was like, Lord, don't let that happen. And I was very focused on, and, on praying hard and having God listen to my requests. And the issue wasn't that I was going to the Lord and asking for my request because there's nothing wrong with that. It was more of the intent that I was going with because I was going with asking the Lord to listen to my will and at my timing. I was asking him to do this specifically and I wasn't asking him to do his will, which praying with intercession means letting him do his will, which is what he wants and what he's going to decide and at his time. And it's not my timing. And if I'm being honest, praying with intercession, it's, it's very difficult because as humans, we, we like to dictate the events that will take place in our lives. And any small inconvenience um, angers us with God, whether it be, this is not what I asked for, I prayed for this to happen to this person, and it wasn't how I wanted it to come out, or it wasn't the right timing, it was too late, it was too early, whatever it may be. And so I'm learning through this to ask God to for me to be okay with the will of God and to pray with intercession. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> um, so if we continue, the next part of the passage, Ellen White talks about how Jesus was weary from his day and he did not rest even when the rest of the city slept. He stayed up and pleaded to the Father that his disciples will be kept away from evil. So as I talked about earlier, Jesus had a huge responsibility in selecting his 12 disciples. And Ellen White says that he was selecting 12 sinners to go out and teach the gospel. And he prayed before he went out and selected them and prayed with intercession so that God, it may be God's will and not his own. So as I mentioned about my uncle, um, my family and I, we've been going to the hospital a lot this past week and praying with my family there. And even um, Pastor Marco Moreno from the Spanish church has gone out and prayed with my family. And then we come home, and we're a family of four at home, so we all four pray as well. And then it comes time to sleep, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I think I've prayed enough, or I think enough prayers have been said. You know, all of my family's praying. We're asking everyone to pray. Like, it's been a day, and I just kind of doze off. But you see, this prayer at the end of the night when I'm in my room alone is different because this is when I'm leaving the busy city, just as Jesus went up to the mountain to leave the busy city to be in private conversation with the Lord. And that is my private time with the Lord. And so I've been 
pushing myself to also be like Jesus and seek that quiet place where I'm alone at the end of the day. And the second part of the pamphlet that I was giving talks about understanding the stakes. So while some Christians start their day with God, due in part to the fear of what awaits them once they leave their home, many rarely end it in his presence. Having received what they needed to get them through the day, they barely pause to thank God for his provision and protection over their lives. Tired and worn, they drop into bed with little thought of seeking him for power to face tomorrow's trials. They rarely even thank him. So here in the second part, the pamphlet talks about how we're ending our day praying to the Lord to prepare ourselves for tomorrow's trial. The same way that Jesus prepared himself the night before he selected his 12 disciples. Could we imagine if Jesus hadn't prepared himself for selecting his 12 disciples? I mean, how many of us don't prepare for big events for our lives by praying? We can prepare many other ways, but how many of us prepare ourselves by praying? And we've all heard, you reap what you sow, but how many of us have actually stopped to think about why things don't go our way when we don't properly prepare for our trials? So one last verse, or one of the last verses um, that I'm going to be reading is Galatians 6, verses 7 through 8, and I believe, yes, it's on the screen, um, and it says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. In order for us to reap, to reap the riches of, that God provides for us, which is patience, love, understanding, forgiveness, as the Bible tells us, we need to also sow good praying habits, just like Jesus did when he was selecting his 12 disciples and countless other times in the Bible. And we can also, through, the, through these habits, learn to pray with intercession. Jesus understood the high stakes that spiritual, the spiritual reality that greeted him each day. He had a keen awareness of the spiritual danger that his disciples faced, even when they had not a clue. And so the last Bible verse that I want to leave you guys with, just a thought to end the night, it can be found in James 5, verses 13 to 16. And it says, is, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has a great power as it is working. And so there will be moments in our life when we will be that all-night prayer warrior, and we will seek God's will and guidance at the end of our day in privacy of our homes. So today and every day, I invite everyone to not miss the opportunity to end our day with our hearts lifted to God in prayer and praise. Let's talk to our God and to one another that our sisters and brothers in Christ may also pray with intercession and us as well and be prayer warriors like Jesus was. Thank you, everyone. Did you like that? Amen. You can tell that's definitely from God. Especially, I like the part after the end of the day, when you're alone in your room and you have that private time with God. That's the time when God can really search your soul and let you know how you're doing and you can actually be with him as well, let alone about taking care of each other. Amen. Now, what is our theme song for the week? So, I heard it softly and tenderly. I didn't hear it in the projection voice, but I heard, heard it. And Victor and Danielle will be up to sing softly and tenderly. I remember last year's theme song. And I hopefully by the end of this, this year's 10 days of prayer, we'll, this will be etched in our minds and hearts also. Let's sing together. Softly and tenderly. Yes. 
Jesus. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. At the heart portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, Come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and have not his mercy? Mercies for you and, and for me. Come home, come home. If you are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Think of the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, you are weary, come home. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Amen. So now, for those that have been here before, you know what time it is. Small group prayer time. If we could get into groups no more than five, so that we all finish about the same time. First and foremost, I'd like to pray, everyone to pray about the all-night prayer, that late-night prayer when you're by yourself, when you're talking to the Lord, not only to realize what the day is brought and to reflect on it but to look for the day ahead that the lord may prepare and smooth the path for each one of us during that time and also for church revival and for praying for the latter rain as well as any personal request in the group that there may be now we know the importance of prayer right I say this every night because I want to make sure that you get sick of me saying it. What were the three items in the holy place in the temple? Showbread, candlestick, 
and the altar of incense. And the showbread is the word of God. The candlestick is with the oil, the Holy Spirit, and the altar with incense is the prayers of the saints ascending to heaven. Part of salvation for every single one of us. If we don't know how to pray to God, or at least pray to God, we're cutting out a big part of our relationship with them. So um, those that want to go to, are, that are off-site, that want to join the Zoom prayer meeting, it is up on the board as well, and that will start in about five minutes. Thank you, and please um, get into our groups and start praying.
Okay, we'll go ahead and end with one last prayer, if we could all bow our heads. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, first asking for forgiveness for our sins, Lord. We ask that you listen to each of the prayers that were said tonight, Lord, that it may be your will, Lord, that may be done, Lord. We pray for the sick, Lord, that you may cure them. We pray for the people at home, Lord, as well. And we also pray for safe travels on the way back home, Lord, and that we might have been able to learn something from this tonight, Lord, and take it home and just be able to also be in prayer alone in our rooms at the end of the night the way that you were on that mountain, Lord. Please be with each and every one of us, Lord, and bless everyone here. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>